10-Minute Murder. In many true crime cases, investigators uncover more than they expected when looking into a suspect. Hidden affairs, suspicious deaths, fraud, and theft. When Alex Murdaugh, a highly successful lawyer in South Carolina, called the police to report that his wife and one of his children had been shot dead, nobody expected the course the investigation would take. Day by day, the secrets that Alex had been trying so hard to keep hidden began to see the light. Alex wasn't just a successful lawyer. He and his family were some of the most dominant legal forces in the entire state of South Carolina. His great-grandfather, Randolph Murdaugh, had been the one to bring the family's name into the public eye when he opened his own law office in the early 1910s. In 1920, Randolph was elected to serve as the first chief prosecutor for a 3,000-mile region that incorporated five different counties. From that day forward, being in the Murdoch family guaranteed two things, a successful legal career and all the wealth that came with it. It was passed on through the generations, each son taking the role from his father. Alex's father, grandfather, and great-grandfather had all sat comfortably in that role, exuding a huge amount of power over the slice of South Carolina that their legal firm ruled. The Murdaughs, being so well-known in the area, meant that when two of them were murdered, it was the talk of South Carolina's low country region. It began on June 7, 2021, Alex Murdaugh had spent most of the time at home with his loving wife, 52-year-old Maggie Murdaugh, and one of their two sons, 22-year-old Paul. They lived in a rural area, isolated 65 miles outside of Charleston. In the late evening, at about 9 o'clock that night, Alex had left home alone, intending to visit his mother. When he arrived back at his family home, it wasn't long before he made a 911 phone call. Before giving any details to the operator, Alex first took the time to introduce himself by his full name in between what appeared to be sobs of anguish. He then informed the operator, quote, I need the police and an ambulance immediately. My wife and son were just shot badly. The operator asked if the victims were still breathing. Alex responded that they were not. Unlike most 911 callers who remain close to their loved ones while waiting for an ambulance to arrive, Alex told the operator that he'd gone to the location of the bodies near his dog kennels, checked if Maggie and Paul were breathing, and then left again. First responders arrived at the scene and were unable to resuscitate Paul or Maggie. Not that Alex had made any effort to do that himself in the early, crucial minutes after he discovered they had been shot. While talking to local law enforcement from the county sheriff's office, Alex informed the officers that he was concerned that Paul had been the target of the attacks. A few years ago, Paul was charged with several felonies due to his involvement in a boat crash. Paul had been severely intoxicated and behind the wheel of his boat, and he'd crashed into a bridge, killing one of his passengers, 19-year-old Mallory Beach. According to Alex, somebody had been making threats to Paul ever since the crash. Alex told the police that he believed the person who had been making the threats might have been the shooter. One part of Alex's story was easily confirmed. Both Maggie and Paul had been fatally shot, and multiple shell casings from the same weapon were found at the scene. However, other evidence was hard to come by. Officers scoured through footage from neighbors' surveillance cameras, but as time went by, the investigation appeared to come to a standstill. In the months after Maggie and Paul died, very few details were made public, and nobody was placed under arrest for over a year. It was a local mystery, and everybody had a theory about what might have happened to the two prominent members of the community. Before long, the killings were given a nickname, the Murdaugh Murders. Even though the murders themselves remained a mystery, there was no shortage of information coming forward about the legendary Murdaugh family. It began only a couple of weeks after Maggie and Paul were shot dead when South Carolina's law enforcement division made a surprising announcement. They were opening a new inquiry into another death connected to the Murdaugh name. 
In 2015, a 19-year-old by the name of Stephen Smith was found dead, lying in the road about 10 miles away from the Murdoff family home. Stephen's family never received any closure. From the start, the entire case, to put it simply, was weird. Due to the location of Stephen's own vehicle, it seemed as if the 19-year-old had run out of gas more than a mile away from where he died. In the early days after the body was found, it was believed that Stephen died in a shooting incident. Then, the course of the investigation changed, and the police began to wonder if Stephen had been the victim of a hit-and-run. However, Stephen's mother never believed the hit-and-run theory. Nobody had found any vehicle debris at the location where Stephen supposedly was hit. If he was a hit-and-run victim, then the vehicle that killed him had not hit anything else in the area and had driven away without a scratch. No arrests were ever made, and the Murdaws were never directly implicated in Stephen's death, even though his body was found in an isolated area relatively close to their home, and the decision to open a new inquiry into the death took place only weeks after Maggie and Paul were shot. Stephen's mother began fundraising efforts, hoping that Stephen's body could be exhumed and re-autopsied in the search for more answers. The more awareness was raised about the case, the more people began to whisper about the Murdaws. It's worth noting that Stephen Smith was gay, and there were rumors that he was having a secret situationship with Buster, Alex Murdaugh's oldest son. But again, those are only rumors. After losing half of his family in one night, the remaining Murdaugh son, Buster, made a public statement in response to the rumors about Stephen Smith, rumors which he described as vicious. He said, quote, I unequivocally deny any involvement in Stephen's death, and my heart goes out to the Smith family. Stephen Smith's mother doesn't necessarily believe that a member of the Murdoch family was responsible for her son's death. She just wants answers, no matter where those answers could be found. She explained her feelings at a news conference, saying, quote, I just love my son, and since I couldn't protect him, I'm going to fight for him. I hope to find the real reason for Stephen's death and the real why. Lawyers agreed to apply for a court order to approve Stephen's remains being exhumed, but clarified that there was no new evidence that linked the Murdoch family to Stephen's mysterious death. To this day, Stephen Smith's case remains unsolved. Three months after the murders, the investigation into the Murdoch murders took another surprising turn. On the 4th of September, 2021, Alex Murdaugh was shot in the head. The previous day, Alex had willingly resigned from his job, even though he worked at a law firm that had been in the Murdaugh family for more than three generations after being initially founded by Alex's great-grandfather. The circumstances surrounding Alex's resignation and why he was shot the next day are where the story begins to get murky. An employee at the firm had discovered something unusual, a check that was meant to be addressed to the firm as a whole, but it was instead addressed to only one person, Alex Murdaugh. At first, it was thought to be a mistake, but the firm was obligated to investigate the check. The deeper they looked, the more evidence of Alex's shady legal and financial practices they found. Finally, instead of firing him, they asked him to resign, which he did. And the next day, he called 911 to report that he'd been a victim of a drive by shooting. Captain County 911, where's your emergency? On um, Sarkahatchee Road. Okay, what's the address on Sarkahatchee Road? I'm by the church. Uh, what church? Uh, here? What church are you talking about? Uh, I don't know the name of it with the red roof. Oh. Um, Okay, what end of Sarkahatchee Road? Because I don't know what you're talking about. Um, at the Hampton County side. Okay, what's going on? I stop. I got a flat tire. Mm-hmm. And I stopped, and somebody stopped to help me. And when I turned my back, they tried to shoot me. Oh, okay. Were you shot? Yes, but okay. I mean, I'm okay. You shot where? Where were you shot at? Huh? Did they actually shoot you or they tried to shoot you? They shot me, but... Uh, okay, wait, you need EMS? Uh, well, I mean, yes, 
I can't drive. Okay. I'm and I'm bleeding a lot. Where, where part of your body? Uh, I'm not sure. Somewhere on my head. Your head? Somewhere on my head. Somebody just stopped for me, ma'am. Um, for 911. Okay. Still? Hey. Okay. And what's your name? I'm still here. I'm going to stay on the line with you. What's your name? Alex Murdoch. Alex Murdoch? Yes, ma'am. And you see you were driving, you got a flat tire, and somebody stopped to help you, and they shot you? Well, they pulled over, yes, ma'am, like they were going to help me. Okay, stay on the line with me. We're going to get some. I'm bleeding pretty bad. Okay. Stay on. St. John's Missionary Church. St. John's Missionary Church? Yes, ma'am. And can you give me a description of the person that shot you or shot at you? Yes, ma'am. I mean... It was a a, a white fella. Uh, I'd say a white male, a fair amount younger than me. Uh, really, really short hair. Um, you have an ambulance coming, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes, sir.